myself, and joining me for this one is Kocha. Yes, that is me. I'm here, and just excited to cast some Southeast Asian Dota as always. Always lots of fun, lots of action to be had, just from the get-go almost. Zero Latitude, though, they're on quite a losing spree at the moment, to be honest, so... I'm just hoping that they will finally find their footing here. You and me both, Zero Latitude, they have played some formidable Dota in the past. I believe the last game I cast with them, they actually won, but... Uh... Going up against Minuska, it's not exactly Radiant the easiest opponent, I think you'll agree with me on that one. Yeah, most certainly it's not, but coming into this draft, looking at the bands, it's like... Woohoo, surprising, like an Death Prophet taken out. Well, what can we say, we've come to expect this of late, and hopefully 6.82, when it does eventually hit, will shake things up enough to give us something new and refreshing. I think we would all quite like to see that, but going into this one. This is, of course, a J uh, joint Dota League Season 3 one. This is a best of two, so there will be another game immediately after this, and we get Dyer to see the team. normal levels of hopefully aggression and carnage that I've come to expect from some of these Southeast Asian teams, and oh, I, I love when we get a high aggressive game. We've seen a good few uh, in the last few days, haven't we, Coach? Yeah, man. <laughs> it's like, what did we get? Like, two kills per minute one game as well, even? Uh, we've had a few that have been two kills a minute lately. We've had very high aggressive Five games from Tinker. Game. We've had high aggressive games from... Uh, we've even had a high aggressive Venomancer game, if you remember the um, Aghanim Scepter Veil of Discord Nova game. I'm pretty sure I didn't cast it. Ah, uh, it might have been... Ah, uh, oh, no, 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 it was myself and Grandis. It was a pair of us for that one, and that one was an absolute slaughter fest. But going into this one, we also get the Doom and the Viper Band out, and that does leave, of course, the Razor. Now, this means Zero Latitude do have the Brewmaster available. They can take the Tinker should they want it, but does Zero Latitude have a Tinker player, Coucher? I actually haven't seen them play Tinker, at least I think I have not, so I'm inclined to say no, but. If you have the options of Faceless Void Tinker, I guess, if you have a Tinker player, you're just gonna jump at the opportunity, possibly. Of course, a Faceless Void plus anything can be a pretty decent pickup here. The Skyrath Mage, the Shadow Shaman both come to mind, and honestly, I, I would quite like to see something unorthodox once more. We've had a few unorthodox picks lately, like the uh, two games in a row yesterday of Meepo, but... Something something Radiant unorthodox would just keep it refreshing for us, I think, because we get the Shadow Shaman, the Brewmaster, no surprises there, favoring the control, the CC lockdown, and the push, of course, of the Shadow Shaman's wards. But this does, of course, leave Zero Latitude open to going against a Tinker of Minuske. And you do have Jacko, who is a very good Tinker player himself, could look to pick it up here. You mean, actually, just looked up the stats as well for Zero Latitude. They have played five games in August. And they've lost every single two game series, 2 0. So, and they definitely have to step it up a little bit. Of course, they've been through some roster changes as well. So, it's always demoralizing to say the least to just have the roster swap and not have a certain future ahead of you, I guess. But hopefully, they'll just show us strong still. But this Brewmaster, if it's up against the Razor, then the Razor definitely should have the upper hand in the mid lane. But of course, Mineski, they can still use the Razor in an aggressive tri lane, for example, or just safe lane farm even, maybe? They could. I mean, we've seen aggressive tri lane Razor, I want to say, yesterday when we were casting the MPGL. Correct me if I'm I, wrong? Yeah, I think we had it at least in one game. Yeah, we, we had the aggressive tri lane Razor. Now, it, it can work, it's got some high potential for damage, but you are going for that plasma field build, which is... A slight variant on one of the more common ones lately, since we, we do normally see more points in Unstable Current as well as Static Link and just look for lane dominance and control. But Plasma Field's not to be underestimated, it can do a large amount of damage, and especially when you're backed up by, say, a Shadow Shaman or a Ventral Spirit, I believe we saw yesterday. And a yeah, Witch I mean, Doctor. <laughs> well, Witch Doctor would always be nice. Mm. I, mean, I, still, I still think, yes, Kyra of Mage is... I mean, it boosts up the plasma field damage with the ancient seal if it's really necessary. And of course, just having a silence up against a brewmaster is always a good thing to have. I'd completely agree. And the ancient seal you mentioned, brilliant up against that brewmaster. Now, the one thing I would quite like to see here for the Skyrath Mage, we saw it a few days ago when uh, myself and Grandis were casting. We saw Aghanim Scepter Skyrath Mage, the effective Ion Cannon build. <laughs> and did it have the desired effect? 
Uh, let's put it this way. Enemy Night Stalker with 4,000 health dies in a second and a half. Wow. <laughs> How the, what, what, what the hell was that game, man? Night Stalker with 4,000 health? Yeah. It, it was a very late game Night Stalker. I want to say... I, I've got the VOD somewhere. I'll have to check which one it was, but... It was myself and Grandis casting it when it went long. The Night Stalker was the... It was an unorthodox pick. It worked brilliantly for the early game, and it, it was fun to watch. Uh, I've got it here somewhere. I believe it was... Yeah, it's, it, it has to be. It was He He versus Screen Squad. He He United versus Screen Squad. It has to be, because it was the longest game we've cast, and it's the biggest file in my VODs folder. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's my logic there, but that, that was a good game. And we saw Ion Cannon, Skyrath Mage, of course, the Zero cooldown at level 3, uh, Mystic Flare with an Aghanims. Holy yeah. crap, man. I, I'm going to have to go check that VOD later on, but looking at this draft just evolved, kind of. Both teams were taking a rather long time with their bans. Zero Latitude did take out the Ancient Apparition, whereas Invokers so far banned by Mineski. Do you think the Void will actually make it through the second phase here, just to be picked up by either side? It's quite possible, yes. I mean, what bigger heroes are there to ban here for Zero Latitude or Mineske? I mean, they could let the Void through, technically. Minesco could, but Zero Latitude could take it as their third hero since they have the next pick. We could equally see a ban on the Witch Doctor here by Zero Latitude and they're then just conceding the Void to Minesco. Because if you remove the Witch Doctor, it takes out the Death Ward Chronosphere combo. Sure, you've still got the Mystic Flare there, but it's something that Zero Latitude can fight into. I believe we've actually had a game of Zero Latitude. I want to say on the 29th where they actually fought up against that and did reasonably well. And they'll pick up the Pugna, which of course is Radiant one of the best counters to that Skyrath Mage, looking just for that uh, Nether Ward just to pop him whenever he pops it. Yeah, I mean, it's extremely hard for the Skyrath Mage to play up against that Nether Ward. Mm. And, I mean, if Mineski go for a business right now, I think it was with you when we saw an aggressive trident with a Pugna, mm. where the faceless white died rather early on twice because the nether ward he was trying to time walk and that killed him that just ended his life seconds, time walk may cost 90 mana but that nether ward does a phenomenal amount of damage if you remaining. don't keep it in mind you have to always play around the nether ward or focus it and kill it first in a fight and Reason yeah it was time. me for that game that, that was another really good matchup and Look at the Bat Rider here for Minisuke, so looking for that Lasso. Lasso, of course, is a pretty damn good spell for setting up a Mystic Flare as well. So, leaves the Void in the pool. I don't think we're going to see a Void this game off the back of the Bat Rider, because usually you'd have your Void as your initiator. For Minisuke, they now have a Bat Rider. Do they really need the Void as well? Well, in a sense, I do like lineups that don't rely just purely on the Faceless Void getting the initiation for them. If somebody else can go in first and just kind of make it so that the enemy wants to converge on that one hero who jumps in first and just group up a little bit more than they otherwise maybe would. It could be a potentially nice thing to do, but that would mean a faceless void safe lane farming and I've actually seen quite a lot of safe lane faceless voids over the past couple of days and I want to say most of them have not worked out in the favor of the team running it. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of um, picks against the Void. I mean, Pugna is reasonable against the Void. If the Pugna's not caught in that Chronosphere, I believe it was you that mentioned before, he will just stand there and life drain the Void, forcing him out of the Chrono. You mean, and not only that, you can either just decrypt the target they want to go for, or just decrypt the uh, faces of Void himself. Mm -hmm. So Pugna definitely is a pretty decent one. And I mean, even against the Bat Rider, to be honest, Bat Rider usually just wants to activate Firefly and then blink in immediately, but now when he activates Firefly and takes damage from the Nether Ward, he's actually going to have to wait 3 seconds before he can jump in properly, so that's also something that he has to be a little mindful of when he wants to go for his initiations. Well, this is the one thing I like about Pugna, it disrupts so many strategies and brings a lot of pushing power to the table, but you have to be careful when you run the Pugna style of lineup that you don't go too heavy on the push should the game go late and you can't end it early enough because then you can just run out of steam. Ten seconds remaining. But Zero Latitude certainly have, in, at least in my honest opinion, advantage in the draft remaining. at the minute, but Mineske have proven that they can and will fight into Radiant it before. We do see the Chen for Zero Latitude, and this might be a case of seeing a little bit too much push, but it'll all depend on Zero Latitude's final pick. However, this does put Min uh, Mineske on the clock here. Mineske need to outlast 25 minutes. 
that's when the chin starts to fall off in effectiveness, and that's when the pugna starts to fall off in effectiveness. And they'll opt for something very greedy. They're going to go for the Tinker for Jacko here. Now, the Tinker, sure, we say that he can shut down any kind of push, but he needs to get his travels up first, and maybe even the Blink Dagger. You mean, with a chin, it's not the easiest to actually gank. Usually you see heroes like Sky of Mage, Brave King, for example. Those heroes have a, have a pretty easy time just trying to shut down the Tinker with some nice rotations, but... Jen, yes, he can still do so, getting, for example, a troll, high, high troll, how, whatever it's called, really. Just get the ensnare from that. But. The Dark Troll I mean, Warlord. Yeah, Dark Troll Warlord, man. I believe they actually renamed it to Dark Troll Summoner because of some reason, but it, I always called it Dark Troll Warlord because that's what it was called when Dodge 2 was released. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, but I mean, it's just. A Chen is a hero that I haven't seen for a long, long time. Enchanters does pop out every now and then. So I'm just hoping that they have a here or player rather that can just micro enough units at the same time. Mm. I mean, Chen is one of those heroes where it is a specialist pick. When you think Chen, who comes to mind? Puppy and Ake. Not many other players in the pro scene come up when you mention a Chen. You need a specialist player that can handle the Chen properly. And we will get a Nyx to round out the strategy for Zero Latitude here. And I honestly like this Nyx pick. He can get in and destroy the Skywrath Mage. Same to the Tinker. And if Batrider has Firefly everywhere, he'll walk into the fire, pop Carapace, and Batrider is stunned. Yeah, I mean, it used to be such a common pick when the Batrider was always picked, just Nyx Assassin to try to counter it for the exact same reason you just mentioned. Just Carapace into the Firefly. But now Mineski, they do need one more support unless they want to go for a jungler as well. I guess Zero related to having one Mineski, they could go for even more greed, I guess, trying to pick up a, an Enigma, but I would kind of advise against it. I don't think we're going to see something very greedy, and we'll get a Juggernaut for the final pick, so we get that unorthodox pick I was looking for, and you've got to consider what a Juggernaut can bring to the table here. The heroes on the side of Zero Latitude, all fairly squishy with the exception of the Brewmaster. Sure, Decrepify can stop the ultimate bouncing around, I'll grant you that, but we have to consider the fact that Juggernaut's healing ward Juggernaut's Healing Ward is a percentage heal. I believe, off the top of my head, it is the only percentage-based heal in the game, which makes it phenomenally powerful. But on that note, as we load into the game, let's introduce the players, shall we? I'll take Meniske, and we f have four Meniske. Jacko on the Tinker. We have Jesse Vash on the Juggernaut. We have Oa on the Batrider. Play Hard on the Skyrath Mage. And finally, we do have Joven on the Razor. And for Zero Latitude, Promisi will be playing the Nyx Assassin, leaving Fated to Love You on the Brewmaster, Black Sheep on the Shadow Shaman with Dandy or Spika up on the Pagna, and the last one will be Lavida on the Chen. Now, I'm going to be interested to see how Lavida does in terms of performance wise with this Chen, because a Chen, as I mentioned, is a specialist hero, and it takes, as you pointed out, a certain degree of micro to be able to handle it. A good Chen player. Are few and far between. It's the same for a good Meepo player, they are few and far between. But I'm never going to counter any player, I'm never going to counter any team, and it's going to be interesting to see what Levita can do in this game with this Chen. Can we see those good rotations? Can we see those good ganks? But uh, speaking of ganks, Jesse Vash and Playhard, they're lurking nearby, and the Juggernaut and the Skyrath Mage is actually a pretty good combo considering concussive shot, long range, non targeted slow. That sets up quite nicely for the oh, man. I fear for Chen's life, he's in no man's land. He is, he's just trying to get some control up with wards possibly. Eh? Oh, he's so screwed, Jacko is going to come in now as well. Oh no, this is not where he wants to be, and Oa will catch him out, Jesse Vash is here as well. It would not surprise me just to see the Battle Fury or the Blade Fury up now to kill him from Jesse Vash. Here we go, the spin is there, damage is real from Jacko. And that's going to be first blood, goes the way of Jacko with that laser. That gives a distinct advantage towards that Tinky. He can order out his boots right the hell now should he want to. And I'm not honestly sure, was it really worth getting here to block this ancient stack, giving away first blood like that? 100% <laughs> not worth it at the moment. Actually, no black sheep does make it out alive, thank god for him. I mean, he's pretty damn slow, 285 movement speed. Mm. And if you look at Jesse Vash, he started with the boots of speed as well. And now they're gonna just body block the pull from happening at La Vida. He's not even right clicking the chugger not to cancel the clarity. Finally he goes in, but... At this point, he has enough mana already anyway, and Playhard is there. We face silence, and well, I guess Chen is far enough from the Juggernaut, but... 
uh, we just, don't have any points spent on the on play hard, so he could have opted for that concussive shot if they really wanted to get aggressive. But I think we can say from here that from where we stand, this is going to be very unpleasant in terms of uh, the Chen's jungle and laning phase. I, I can't see this being very effective whatsoever. But uh, we do have a stats man with us today, and you can see Miske are currently three wins, three losses versus zero latitude, ten losses. I mean, just look at the Uwa as well, he's going aggressive on the Brewmaster, 7 stacks of Sticky Napalm, make it 8 now. He needs the Firefly on top of him though, but the slows have been there. 9 stacks, man, are you kidding me, but... 9 stacks and you can't get the kill, That that's something you don't see all that often. No, it is, and, and well, just look how much damage Fate Did Love You took from one single right click with 10 stacks. I mean, Oa having good control over this top lane, and we can just see the pressure coming in from what is a support Juggernaut and support Skyrath Mage combo. They're just roaming around the map, catching the slows, catching the, the spins with the Juggernaut, and that can spell the doom of any hero should they be able to get on top of them. Maybe with the exception of the Brewmaster, considering how tanky he is at this point. And in all intent and purposes, I'm going to place my money on Mineske, not only from their lineup and the unorthodox pick, and I do love to see unorthodox picks, but if we just look at the level of control they've already established only two minutes in this game they w spent time to block Chen's camps they spent time to disrupt his jungle this ruins the Chen the Chen needs at least a good few minutes in the jungle before he can really have that level of effectiveness that we would expect and then we look to the mid lane we already had first blood for Jacko and he's controlling the Tinker fairly well laser to harass reducing his ability to, uh, reducing the Pugna's ability to last it and just causing all manner of problems oh, man, with Lavida, Lavida in the jungle, in the jungle. You get the spin on him, you get that slow as well as the Arcane Bolts. He's going nowhere. There is no no way he can escape this. And it's another kill going the way of the Skyrath Mage of Clayhard. And this is the kind of thing that a Skyrath can just make use of. Getting all these early kills, we could see a uh, case of Playhard evolving into a semi-carry. Same for Jesse Vash on the Juggernaut. Both of these have that potential to go into a semi-carry role. And yeah, I'd they should... In the meantime, uh, the Tinker got a solo kill into Pagna as well. Pagna, he did activate the regeneration rune in hopes that he will regenerate enough health before the heat seeking missiles connect, but just wasn't enough. So, 3 0, 3 minutes in, and they're effectively winning every single lane. I mean, especially bottom lane, Chauvin. He has such an easy time up against the Nyx Assassin. I mean, Razor crashes mo like any melee matchup anyway. Mm. Razor does crush any melee matchup, and sure, the Nyx, if he gets harassed, can just pop the carapace, but. I was going to say we should take a look down in this lane. It's going to go the way of Joven. There's very little the Snicks can do. And sure, the Razor will drain him, but the Razor just won't attack him. And then just go back to farming. Completely controlling the lane as well as denies and kill last hits. It's a very oh, good early start. For There's him. a smoke into mid lane as well, Dandy. I fear for the Pugna's life. Actually, his positioning was spot on. He got the slow, but he is safe. Although La Vida... The they smoked up as well, so... Yeah, the smoke actually got revealed at this point here by the uh, the Shadow Shaman on the high ground. and That's the big difference right now. Is uh, I should probably fix that. My uh, my override VLC didn't actually trigger, so i just uh, fix that quickly. There we go. Oh, man. Well, at the moment, th this is going pretty horrible if you're zero latitude, but... Another smoke gang was, or another smoke was used straight after the first one broke, more or less. So they want to get Cho, and if they get it, it's a high priority kill. The shackles will they begin? Yes, they will. They need a little bit more though. The impale will follow up as well. The troll and snare, but he's tanky enough, I think. The plasma field as well, and oh, the spike carapace actually just gets that little stun to buy enough time. You can't underestimate the carapace. The the nice thing about the carapace, the damage on it doesn't change. You take the damage that you're dealt, but the stun duration is the only thing that scales up. And from where we stand, that's a pretty damn good kill on the Razor, and the Chen will at least get something for his efforts, but he will take another death at the hands of Playhard, and Playhard is developing quite nicely here in terms of last hits and kills. You look you at mean, him right now, he's got two kills, zero deaths, moving around the map, he's already level four at five minutes in. It's quite effective there for the Skyrath Mage. Yeah, you never just want to have him get some farm, but actually Ova activates the Firefly, JC Vash wants to come in as well, the Blade Fury activated, they actually might have enough with the slow, four stacks of sticky napalm, but Magic Stick popped, I think he's actually going to be fine, the Brewmaster, 
I I don't know. It will, it will take us a little bit more Firefly damage and he'll go down. Or will he? Primal Split will go up and they will be able to turn around and bring down Oa. Is he going to go deep and go for Jesse Vash as well? He certainly can. If he gets that stun, Jesse Vash tunneling into the trees. But he gets caught, locked down in the tree line and he could fall here. One more boulder. A couple of right clicks could spell his doom. But is there enough mana to do one more Thunderclap? It's not needed. The crit comes through. Of course he didn't strike for 10 seconds. That's a guaranteed crit and a kill. Holy crap, that turn around by the Brewmaster. And... He couldn't have had the more perfect time to actually pop his primal split there. And he was so close to level 6, I mean, or rather so close to not having level 6 when the fight engaged. And I think actually him kiting around might have had bought enough time for the tower to destroy a creep or two for him to get at level 6. <laughs> I have a feeling that was indeed the case, and that was quite literally the skin of your teeth level of I'm nearly dead, but I'm going to kill everyone anyway. <laughs> so... Zero Attitude, they do strike back, it's 3-4 to four now, it's not as disastrous, but looking at the last hit chart, they are still losing every single lane. Yes, they do have a jungler, which helps out a little bit, but when this makes a session, I, I guess he really wanted his level 6 anyway, gonna have his Akane boots as well, so can start up with the ganks. Well, speaking but, of ganks, Jesse Vash gets the another. The, 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 strength of, the strength of this Juggernaut is going to become quite scary. Juggernaut's currently 1-1-2. One, one, and two. He's been attack. around the map getting good numbers of kills. He's equally level 4 as a support Juggernaut in this case. This game is going to be very gank-heavy across the board, it seems. You mean... Zero right to do, But that's their lineup. They have to do it. They have to just get some kind of control and start pushing down towers. Otherwise, they're just done for. Mm. Well, Mineske, they're going to lose Jovan again. Unfortunately, this time it's a full four-man rotation, and they're going to kill off the Razor with very little ability to stop this. And now we could see a potential push onto this Tier 1 in the mid lane. We do have the Chen nearby with a Centaur Creep, as well as the Nether Blast damage coming through from the Pugna to try to bring this tower down. We don't have Mass Serpent Wards, but it does not matter at this point. This tower could potentially fall. They're going to pop the Fortification. Where's the defense? Where are the TPs? They've got Play Hard. They've got Jesse Vash. That's not enough in my mind, and the Nether Ward in the back lines is going to force Playhard to think twice about this and the tower will go down. Tier 1, first one of the game, in favour of Zero Latitude. I guess it's not too surprising that they were the first ones to get the tower down. Of course, didn't expect them to just all of them to come down to the bottom lane, but... They have some arcane boots now, extra. Dandy picks them up on the Pagna, La Vida. He's gonna pick up his as well, I guess, yes. So the next time they come... Ramizzi oh, will get cleaned up again. Now you've got March of the Machines, you've got the slow coming out from Playhard. And you've got Jesse Vash there with the Blade Fury. This is rapidly going to snowball out of control if Jesse Vash and Playhard continue getting these kills while the top three cores, the Tinker, the Razor, and the Batrider, all keep farming. The top of last hits and denies. Yeah, I mean, this Tinker is just having the boost of travels. He actually opted to go for just bottling into boots rather than getting a soldering before as well, but he's going to have the soldering fast enough now just. Keeping from lane to home, lane to home, just reaching up with the bottle. So this Tinker, he's off to an extremely good start and Zero Latitude. I mean, I guess their cores don't have too bad of a farm now with the tier 1 tower going down and getting some kills. Uh, they've but. got some some position on the net worth chart, but you've still got four members, uh, it's three members of the top four in terms of net worth being the cause of, of Mineske. This is still going to be very hard to fight into, even if towers start to fall, considering just the sheer killing potential from Mineske. Oh yeah, and by the way, your in-game mic, I my think, is mic. disabled. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll double check that. I have a feeling that my uh, my... Auto exec is not saving the mic setting for some reason, but we do get a potential bit of a question. Top lane, you've got the Tinker just coming in to drop the march, and I'll use this opportunity to quickly double check the audio. There we go. Yeah, it should now be triggering in game, and that is a annoying thing that I need to figure out why that keeps happening. Yeah, I mean, but oh, mid lane, Dandy gonna get slowed down, but he got far enough before I me. Mean, Pagna's movement speed is pretty good. And actually, he wanted to go for the slight turnaround decrep on Skyrath, but couldn't get in range for an Ender Blast. Well, if they can get the, the potential aggression on the Pugna here, the Pugna, he is really squishy. He will go down no matter if he pops his decrep to try to save his life or not. The physical damage from the Juggernaut or the magical damage from the, uh, from the Blade Fury of the Juggernaut, let alone the Skyrath Mage, is enough to kill off uh, Spicker very quickly, as we've seen. But now we get another attempt at a smoke. This has got to be the... I want to say fourth smoke we've seen so far. I believe they've had one restock so far. <laughs> they have used a crap ton of smokes indeed. Mm. And actually, Nether Blast, Andy, he just kind of reveals the smoke now, of course. 
It's not like Mineski know where the others are smoking into. And oh, bottom lane, Joven might get his third death of the game. Well, if they can bring down the Razor, that's going to be very good to get the Vendetta to start. Now the Thunderclap. The damage is going to be too much for the Razor to stand. He does get one, uh, one final Plasma Field off, but still, we're at a position where the Tier 2 can start taking some serious amounts of damage here. You've got the Chen, you've got the Brewmaster nearby, and I believe he does have Primal Split, but in comes Jacko to try to stop this. The Tinker, March of the Machines, it's going to deter all levels of push, at least until we see the Mass Serpent Wards. And speaking of Mass Serpent Wards, we did lose the Shadow Shaman up on that top lane the while we had the fight going down on the bottom. Yeah, Owa just first time using his Blink Dagger on the Bat Rider, which is less so as well, so... It's always nice when you pick up a Blink Dagger and the first gank actually succeeds as well. Although, Shadow Shaman, I guess, not the hardest kill to get there. No, he is one of the squishiest heroes in the game at the minute. He's still not got his level 6. He's only got his brown boots. I mean, he is quite literally the epitome of a soft target, a squishy target. And if they can finish him off, that will at least put massive advantage Dyer's to way of Minisuke. Not that it already attack. isn't advantage Minisuke at this point. And sure, we're 11 minutes in, but now we get another smoke out of Minisuke. And they want to try to fight, and they're going to find Speaker. The Concussive attack. Blast goes out, but they need the follow-up damage. Ancient Seal is there, but they get that Nether Ward down just in time, and we're not going to see any initiation from Jesse Vash and his Juggernaut. And he does have Omni Slash good to go now, so he could potentially even find Fated I Love You, but he does have Primal Split and can get away from the Omni Slash. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, of course, Brewmaster has the ability to just blink Thunderclap Primal Dyer's Split before the Omni Slash possibly even has the chance to come out at all. They even have the Dark Troll Summoner around. As Bramisi also comes in, he has to that already. Can they still get the kill? So, Playyard is the easiest target. They're going for Joven instead, but the silence onto the Brewmaster. But the follow up's done from the Impale is there. Shackles as well. Hand of God used, and Joven will lose his life. But Levita on the sidelines. Chen cannot stand. And it's a one for one razor for Chen at this point. So it is advantage in terms of the hero killed towards zero latitude. But while this is going on, you still have Oa nearby. He can't really initiate, though, with the threat of that Netherward. And the, equally, the Tinker cannot do much. And tier one in the mid lane will go down. In my mind, it's only going to be a matter of time before we see more aggression. Speaking of aggression, in comes the Tinker to save Play High's life. They managed to finish off the Brewmaster. Master, and that's going to be quite a key kill going the way of Mineske. And we might yeah, see the aggression Rush starting to ramp up. Yeah, I was going to say, we're about to see the aggression start to ramp up. The, the Juggernaut gets trapped in the Mass Serpent Wards. And I'm not going to say Zero Latitude at, by any means out of this game. They've shown they can fight into this and they do have that pugna. So they can start working on to Joven here. And unfortunately, the Impale will miss, but still going to force the Razor out of this one. Especially with that Nether Ward down, they can't risk pushing into this one, and that Nether Ward just stops so many levels of aggression coming out of Mineske. Yeah, especially from the Tinker, although Tinker so far he's been doing so damn well. Just look at the net worth, 3k above anybody else in the game, and every time a Tinker is at such a level of farm early on, it is scary for the enemy team, and he's 2 0 and 2 as well at the moment. And I just have a feeling that he's gonna start getting way more active now that he has his Blink Tiger finished and just. He's closing in on what I can guess is going to be a Dagon, possibly. Considering how squishy the lineup of Zero Latitude are, it would not surprise me to see a Dagon, but we actually see the point booster, so looking for a Bloodstone first on that Tinker to give him that level of regeneration and just able to stay in the lanes without needing to go back to the fountain so much. That's going to at least help out in some way, shape, and form, but I was expecting more burst damage. Sure, Bloodstone means you're not going to have to go back to the well so much, but getting an earlier Dagon can literally pop speaker like a balloon. Well, I guess Bloodstone is a pretty common item when you're up against a Pagna, just to make sure that the Nether Ward just doesn't kill you off completely. But I would have preferred, like you said, just to get some burst damage, get that level 1 Dagon and then maybe go for Bloodstone. But I guess he has other opinions. I mean, if you can get it fast enough, it's definitely not a bad item in a sense, because the earlier you get it, the more of a chance you have to actually start stacking up the Bloodstone charges in a sense. So it has its ups and downs. Well, he's not exactly farming slowly. For the net worth, he is leading the net worth on that Tinker. We can equally bring up gold per minute. He's near 600 GPM. So, Bloodstone will only be at least uh, five minutes max away. And he already has the most expensive piece. And now we're seeing another Siege on a Tier 1. Mass Serpent Wards commit. Nether Blast as well. That will go down. Maybe not even needing the Mass Serpent Wards there, but dropping them for security. And are we going to see a Tier 2 push off the back of this one? I don't know, because we do see Mass TPs away. You've got Bramizi, he's lurking nearby, he wants to try to start getting some kills rolling on the all-important uh, Nyx Assassin, but across the board, Minisuke are starting to get up their key items. They've got that mechanism finally finished on Joven's Razor. 
And equally, you do have play hard lurking nearby with an urn. He can start fighting, and the Juggernaut will drop his Omni Slash just to evade the damage coming out of Bram Easy. But in comes the Mystic Flow in the meantime. Gilink can breathe up for play hard, and now they're going to look to potentially bring down the Brewmaster. But Meniske isn't not going to fall back on this one. They're going to hang around. They want the kills, and they're going to bring down the Fire Panda. Jacko is here on the back lines as well, but there is a Nether Ward. Speaker is here to try to defend his team. Nether Blast are going to drop, but the Ward is now dead, and Speaker will be the victim. The Plasma Field, too much damage. Down goes the Pugna. Now they're going to find Fated to love you. He doesn't have a Primal Split. He has no recourse to escape this one, and Joven picks up the double. <laughs> Joven, he did steal 224 points of damage from the Storm Panda. So, I mean, those right clicks. He hit for more than 300 damage, and 16 minutes into the game, that is more than any one hero can handle, to be honest. And of course, Chaco just keeps on racking up those kills, keeps on getting the farm as well. They're gaining the map control and they're up against a pushing lineup, but they have managed to, well, they are one tower behind, but it's still a pretty nice feat for them. I'll agree with that. They're, they're fighting back in and you say they're only one tower behind. The, the problem I have with the lineup coming out of... Uh, Lonek coming out of Zero Latitude right now. They need to maintain the tower advantage and maintain their own towers so they keep the gold advantage, basically. You see my point. This is a big problem here for, uh, for Zero Latitude because as we look at the graphs right now, Meneske have quite the gold lead. 13 kills as well as the towers almost equal. It adds up against Zero Latitude fairly heavily. And if we equally look at the experience, that's about a 12k lead for Minisuke for experience alone. And sure, a lot of that is Tinker who's just pinging around the maps, getting all of the experience across all of the lanes. But while this is going on, Razor has been just farming for the most part. He has been voluntarily a part of a single fight, that mid fight. Other than that, he has quite literally been rotating around the map doing what he can. And we get another smoke out of Zero Latitude. Smoke gaming, it seems, out of uh, out of our dire side for this game one. And they're mm -hmm. going to go for potentially the Roshan off the back of this one. They do have Master Pentward, so it would be a nice sneak. Although, who does they give it on? Do they just hand the Aegis to the Pugna, or who would be the best candidate to carry it? I think it would be the Pugna in this case. The Pugna or maybe the Nyx. And the Nyx for one reason. The Nyx can come back in, get another stun. He has the, one of the shorter cooldowns in terms of his Impale, only 13 seconds. But we do hear members of Mineske, they are all lurking nearby. They can fight in the pit fairly well. And they do have things like March of the Queens to aid them in this. But it's going to be too late for any form of defense on the Roshan. And this should be going the way of Zero Latitude fairly easily. But as we see, who's it going to go on? It's going to go on to the Brewmaster. Probably the... Um, the, the hero I thought would be least likely to pick it up considering he has his primal split to help him survive and once he really uses the primal split and comes back into a fight is the thunderclap alone worth it versus say the Nyx assassin who can burn mana has carapace has the uh, the impale I mean I, I guess they're thinking that maybe if he jumps in the first time might just get silenced and burst it down so he can definitely just come back and get his primal split off guaranteed but I mean I have to agree if it's I just don't think it's too worth it giving it to him. He's the tankiest hero of them as it is. Maybe the Pugna, I mean, he can spam out so much. Even as an Agon Imperceptor now. And do you actually think just going Agon Imps is the first big item on a Pugna, especially when you're behind and have a pushing lineup that has a pretty small timing window, to be honest, to just do their thing? Well, considering your Chen is picking up the uh, the all-important mechanism, what other options are there that this Pugna can go for that will equally help him tank up in terms of stats and help Siege Towers? I mean, other things that come to mind, of course, you've got Atos, which has its uses, but you've got an Agonims. The Agonims reduces the cooldown to zero, and from where we stand, that's going to help them at least control the lanes, control that fight that a little bit better. I mean, I just thought, like, maybe go for Necrobook. I guess up against the March of the Machines, the Necrobooks will die. Yes, he would get the pure damage from the Tinker, but since he's going for Blastone, he might be able to just survive it. Although, taking the 600 pure damage from killing the Necro Warrior as well as the Nether Ward, popping, popping him down at the same time. I mean, I, I'm just... I guess the life drain might work out with the Aghanims. It has a huge range, like I just mentioned, and can get some teamfight control with it. But we'll see how well he can actually put it to use and just use his positioning in his advantage. Well, I'd be inclined to, to think if they went for the Necro books, they're going to need at least two of them. Because two can pop that Pugna. Two Necro 3s will kill, not Pugna, will kill the Tinker, hands down. But investing for Necro books like that, is it a worthy choice? It will help you sure in terms of your push. It will help you sure in terms of bringing down that Tinker. But 
you consider Life Drain will do exponentially more damage, considering the zero cooldown now, and as he gets those levels up, that will do an increased damage per second as well. Scepter Drain per second at level 2 is 240 life a second. That's, I believe, 4 seconds total, maybe 5 seconds to kill the Skyrath Mage, and that's not counting Nether Blasts or any amplification from, say, Decrepify. Well, the Skyrath Mage definitely won't be a happy one if you should be just getting caught by it. Mm. Especially, like you mentioned, if there's the Amplify of the Decrep as well. Of course, I guess Skyrath does have the ability to just Ancient Seal him back up, and maybe Mystic Player on top of his head at the same time. Very true, but... You, but of course, if you're a Mystic Player while there's a Nether World out, man, you're, you're done for. Yeah, very true. The Pugna will threaten with the Nether Ward, will equally have his team behind him to help lock down these heroes. I was saying in the draft about the control aspect of Zero Latitude's lineup. Dyer's Shadow Shaman, Shackles Hex, attack. Pugna, Decrep, stun, Stuns, in plural, out of Nyx, and Brewmaster. They have a lot of control to which this Drain Life will be able to channel, but now we get the Thunderclap coming in and the Primal Split. Impale across two. This is a good initiation onto Playhard, but they can't finish him off quite in time. But Meniske. They've got Joven, they're draining all of that damage away from that Earth Panda, and now you've got the March of the Machines on the back foot. Ramizi trying to come in, but the Lasso is there, and he will get immediately blasted down by the Tinker. Finds two, now you've got Joven, gets the double, looking for Fated to Love You, will equally get him. The Aegis is forced, they use the Omni Slash and the Mystic Flare for that, so overlapping ultimates a small amount, but blink away now by Fated to Love You, and he should be safe. But it's only a matter of time before this Tier 1 falls off the back of this. All five members of Mineske are alive and healthy. They can take this tier one with a little problem in my mind. You yeah, just excellent fight coming off from Mineski and the gem being there on the bat rider, making it so that Nick Assassin was completely used. Actually, this silence onto Black Sheep as well. Will the plasma field be enough? One more right click Chowen. He gets the kill. Life drain from Dandy onto Chisivash. No, he gets the Blade Fury off. Mech comes up from Chowen as well. He is stun locked by the center at the moment. Another life drain. Now they're gonna make it out. The flame break actually pushes them back a little bit. Another life drain with the T Crep. He's still outrunning them. Well, this is the th threat of the Razor. The Razor is one of the fastest heroes on this field of battle. And sure, you've got Jacko there to put down March of the Machines as well. If Zero Latitude want to continue that aggression, they have to go through the March. And this is the threat of that Aghanim's Life Drain. Just the zero cooldown. He can keep putting what is a large amount of damage on the board infinitely effectively. His only problem is mana, and he has 1,400 mana. Pugna has the highest int gain in the game as well at 4 int a level. He will have a monstrous mana pool. So it's not a problem for him to continue spamming that life drain. Sure, it may get uh, broken by range. Sure, it may get broken by a CC. He'll just cast it again, and he does not care in this fight. By, by the way, look at the item pickup on Chaco's Tinker. He went for a blade mail. A blade mail? Hmm. I suppose this can kill the Pugna if he voluntarily casts within the, the Pugna ward. Yeah, he can just... Uh... Like spam, rearm, stop, rearm, stop, rearm, stop. Re stop. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a little bit quirky, but it can definitely help also against the life drain. To be honest, to an extent, yeah. And the blade mail, it makes some sense in terms of that. And I was, as I say, expecting the Dagon. I was expecting the burst damage, but technically, and I stress technically, the blade mail could be more damage than a Dagon if he does this right. We're going to have to watch the Pugna uh, and the Tinker quite closely in this next team fight to see if we get that interaction. Yeah, I mean, definitely a nice thing to do. Oh, but the last one to Promisi once again. Can they follow up to Nether World? is down already. They use the Omni Test. The Silence is there as well. They secure the kill as Joe, and he gets the grip, but oh, Primus Split. You've got the Blade Mail combo. The Blade Mail actually gets the kill on the Pugna. He did it correctly, but he, uh, he used one uh, rearm too much and died himself for his efforts, but. Down goes the Pugna, down goes the Tinker. Now you've got Joven under the tower. Everyone under the tower. They're going aggressive. They're trying to bring down Playhard. They drop the Nether Ward, the, the Mass Serpent Wards, and they will at least be able to force this back. They don't want to lose their Tier 1 so easily. But on the back foots of this fight, Oa getting focused by Fated to Love You, but he won't be able to get the kill, surely. Fated to Love You has to fall back. He cannot stay with this Bat Rider here. And now you've got Tinker back in the mix. Black Sheep will take a fall. And equally... Jacko looking for Fated Love You. Blink after blink, they want to continue the chase, but in the meantime, middle of the fight, the chain goes down to the Mystic Flare, and the Tier 1 fell. We could look for the Tier 2 off the back of this push, the never-ending fight potentially starting up here, and that is the sheer effectiveness of the lineup of uh, Mineske right now. They can brute force. We did see that Blade Mail interaction that we were looking for as well. Yeah, it was pretty fun to see, although the Tinker... I mean, like I said, already in the middle of the fight, he went for one too many there off his rearm. And even without that, I mean, 
it still damaged him a hell of a lot, even with the blade mail activated. So it's kind of a kamikaze move being with the blade mail, but I mean, otherwise he would just die himself only. So now, even if he dies, you can take one with him. Very true, very true. And this Tinker, it is the literal interaction here as we get another fight breaking out. The Brewmaster cannot hold these fights at all. He just cannot survive. Black Sheep takes a large amount of damage as well, but the Impale coming through from Vermeza <laughs> holding this one back. And There's a Blade Mail on Pagna now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blade Mail Wars. Let the Blade Mail Wars begin. Now, I will point this out. Between Tinker and uh, between Dinka, uh, Tinker and Speaker here on the Pugna, it is quite literally mutually assured destruction. And Speaker will go down, unfortunately, to the damage out of Jesse Vash. But in the meantime, you've got Joven trying to fight into Bramizi. Bramizi uses his Vendetta to try to get away. But this is literally the epitome of mutually assured destruction between Tinker and Pugna right now. And it is, it is absolute chaos to see. Oh, man. This is just so fun, man. Played Mail Wars, how often can you see that? And this time around, they actually did it quite efficiently as well. Both of them just spamming their spells, but... Pagna, he cheated a little bit. He just used Life Drain on anybody he could just get his range on. So, if he can actually Life Drain properly at the same time with mid lane, Blink, Bash. Hex. Yep, but it does not matter. The Juggernaut will just come back up. The Mass Supplements won't do enough. And of course, Jaco can be right here. Hits that laser and down goes the Shadow Shaman. Overzealous trying to solo kill a Juggernaut, especially when a Tinker has travels. I mean, this Tinker is just ridiculously farmed and... I mean, he just died a couple of minutes ago, but he's back to 12 Bloodstone charges already. Well, 12 Bloodstone charges. I suppose this is why he wanted the Bloodstone, so he can play the, uh, the Suicide Pact game with Pugna and have the advantage of a Bloodstone. I cannot think of any other reason at this point. And the Siege coming for that tier 2 on the top lane with the March of the Machines. Razor, jo uh, Joven has the, the Agonims now, and down goes the mid tier 2 off the back of that. He also has that BKB so he can look to fight into the next one very easily and I would not be surprised to see a rotation up for this top tier 2. And what was a very aggressive push strategy from Zero Latitude cannot kill all of the enemy towers before they lose all of their own outer tier 1 and 2s. You mean just their lineup, they needed to get aggressive early on with Ova. He wants to go for some Delasso but he's surrounded by 4 healers. He doesn't care. He has the BKB. Spike Airpus and Lat actually Mystic Flare a little bit too late, so Lavida will potentially make it out. Yes, they popped the mech for it as well. But it's gonna be tier two top lane for it possibly. Yeah, I would I would completely expect that. The tier two is going down and falling, and just look at Jacko. He is just being an absolute pain here. He is being the epitome of you have to go past me to get to my team. Shivas as well as March of the Machines. This never ends and you got Playhard now being drained live but Fate to Love You Blinks in doesn't quite get the initiation in time. Gets Ancient Seal in response and Joven taking a large amount of damage getting drained away by Speaker. He's going to fall here potentially. The mech comes out but in comes Jacko as well as Jesse Vash and that's going to be a double kill for Jesse Vash off the back of that Omni Slash Primal Split to start this one off again. And Jesse Vash will be the focus here, but the Healing Ward, the Healing Ward is doing so much. The Juggernaut will finally fall, and Levita is now the focus of Playhard. And Jacko, and down he goes. Not a chance of escaping that one, and Oa will pick up the Mega Kill. Yeah, and they might get the Panda as well. I, I'm not, yeah, he's not going to get the Blink out, Minis, or Choven rather. He's still 80, 40 points of, points of damage. Not the most, but it's a Grimir if Jacko comes in with the Shivas card. A few more right clicks. They don't need too much. Another Shivas card. They just want to keep chasing him down. The BKB, it's going to wear off, and he's going to go down. Not a chance to escape Jacko. Jacko is everywhere. And it's going to be a case of it's time for the tier three. And Just look at the stand, graphs, man. I, I haven't had a chance to look at the graphs in a while. That's a 25,000 gold lead for Mineske and near a 30,000 experience lead. In comes Black Sheep looking for whatever he can, but it does not matter. And that's a 20,000 net worth tinker as well. Sure, Oa has no mana here, but... Mass Serpent Wards are being uh, dropped and they're just getting farmed up by Joven and by Oa at this point. Speaker wants to come in, get some aggression, but in comes Tinker again. Jacko is back. Right, long rockets to fly. Doesn't blink aggressively for this one, but March of the Machines are dropped. The Shiva's continuing to fly, but he's getting drained. Oh, Blade Mail. Forcing Speaker to think twice here, and rightfully so. Yeah, it's at the moment the Tinker, I mean, just the Blade Mail, it's worked out so damn well for him. In the last fight as well that they did win here, the Blade Mail just completely wrecked the Pagna apart. Pagna tried to use his own as well, but Tinkerman, if he actually finishes that one rearm, he, he has yet another blade mail just waiting for him, so if he times things properly, he will have a blade mail throughout the entirety of the fight. Well, we get a smoke up right now, and 
uh, you've heard me say this a lot over the last two days. Unorthodox is the line between genius and insanity. This blade mail tinker is so unorthodox, it is literally pure genius against the pugner, at least. Oh, play hard with the enemies when he breaks the smoke. Where's oh. the detection? The pop center is too late. Unfortunately for uh, Zero Latitude, I believe that's the sixth or seventh smoke this game. Doesn't quite get the uh, the fight he's looking for, but they play hard, will manage to use the Mystic Flare and bring down one, break that, bring down two. Nyx has fallen, Chen has fallen. Now you've got this Jacko going nuts in this fight, as well as the Blade Fury coming out of the Juggernaut. That too many heroes are falling, and the, the mass healing ward is down. And just look how quickly play hard is healing up off the back of that percentage regen. That's a full five man wipe in the way of Mineske, and they didn't even break a sweat off the back of that one. GG is called, and Mineske take game number one versus zero latitude, but of course there is game number two to come up. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, it was just so great. The last fight, the Pugna did drop down to like, what, 15% of HP, just messing with the Pugna with the Blade Mails and Nether Wars, but... Man, just Mineski, they... they outplayed Zero Latitude throughout, I mean, the most of the game, and just giving out the, the first blood on Chen. That, that's where it just all started. I completely agree for that one. And what was effectively the biggest snowball I've seen in a short amount of time possible out of Mineske, it was still something special to watch, and we even got some some just pure genius I, best thing to see but no matter ladies and gentlemen we shall be back in a few moments with game number two